how's it going? In the previous video, we finally got a first person camera working. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in textures. So I'll bring this up. I've got this folder now and inside the folder is an image. Stella! Remember that? Anyway, so what I want to do is I want to load in this image, display it on a plane, and that'll be the task for today. Now, there will be a little bit of code, a lot of code, but we'll just take it as it comes. So to start with, for the vertices, I'm just going to drastically cut this down to the point where we've just got one plane. And I'm just going to go ahead and shift everything around. So I'll just... Yeah, that's probably fine. And then for the colors, again, I'm going to just really cut down. Just like that. I'm not even going to worry about the wireframe stuff anymore. So I'll just get rid of the wireframe. And then for the face indices, pretty much just the first face. So again, I'll go down to this section here. We're not going to draw the wireframe anymore. Yeah, just the filled one. And if I run this and it works, hmm. Okay, so what I did here is I deleted a bunch of elements, but when you have a tuple, you always need that trailing comma to indicate that it's a tuple and not a numeric expression. Okay, so looking at this, we have got just a single plane. Awesome. What I want to do now is apply a texture to that plane. So, like I said, a little bit of coding here, a little bit of um, boilerplate. But first up, see how I've got all this sort of stuff. Maybe, oh my goodness. Maybe this is what was throwing off my... Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think this is what was throwing off my camera code before. So if you remember, we had this camera and then when we get close, it seems to sort of spin the object around, but then that seems a little less visible at far distances. I think what I was doing, I can't believe I didn't see this, is I was already subtracting five. Now we can get close and it works properly. Oh my goodness, that's that's a real relief. I, I was doubting myself. Okay, so what I'm getting at is we've got all this stuff, which is sort of like setting up OpenGL. So I'm actually going to make that into a function. So I'll do that, you know, set the perspective, projection. And the reason that I want to do that is that I am going to put in an, another flag, which is texturing. So I'm going to enable 2D texturing. Okay. So at this point, 2D texturing is enabled. The next thing I'm going to need is to create a texture. And the way I do that is I make a function which will take in the file name that I want to load and it will return the texture. Now, the funky thing about OpenGL is that OpenGL resources are sort of like opaque data types. They are represented by handles, which are just like integers. So you say, hey, give me a texture. It says, here's your texture, it's seven. But seven is just an internal reference that the GPU, GPU uses when you say, I want to bind texture seven. It has a lookup table where it does that under the hood. But um, anyway, so first thing we're going to do is create that texture. And we're going to have to return that at, in the end. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bind that texture. And what this is doing is saying, hey, the current, 
This is sort of a strange OpenGL thing, but basically what it's saying is, hey, from now on, anytime I want to do an operation on a texture 2D, that under the hood is going to be dealing with this texture. And the reason for that is that old OpenGL functions do not, they, you can't just give that integer. You have to specify the target which in this case is texture 2D. I'll give an example. So let's say I want to set a texture parameter to an integer value. First thing we need to give is a target. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to set the texture parameter for the current texture 2D. The parameter name that I'm going to set is the, I'll go texture wrap s and i'm going to set it to repeat mode so when our u coordinate our x coordinate of the texture coordinate you know goes off the bounds it will wrap around to the other side and same thing for t and then i'm also going to set minifying and magnifying filters so the minifying filter is saying hey how are we going to handle this when we need to shrink that texture down in size and the magnifying filters filter is going to say all right how are we going to handle it when we have to blow that texture up in size so the repeat um the the wrap mode we probably don't need to set but it's good to set it anyway the min and mag filters we absolutely do need to set if those are not set the texture object will be incomplete and you'll get undefined results. It won't be good. But now that we've loaded the texture, generated a texture and configured its sampler, we're gonna have to actually go in and load that file. So I'll say, um, make an image, go pygame image load. And I'm just gonna go ahead and convert this will just convert it to RGBA form just to make sure it has all of its components. I'll then go ahead and get the width and height. And then I'm going to convert it into a bytes, a bytes object. So with that out of the way, I'm then going to need to send that data to the texture image. So I'll say, all right, uh, GL text image 2d again the first thing i'm going to pass in is my target and i'll just bring this up just for reference so okay the first thing here is the target the next thing is an integer that's the mip map level that i'm going to be pasting into mip maps are a concept where we load a texture and then it gets repeatedly downsampled but um, we're not going to have that feature, so the default MIP level is zero. The internal format is going to be RGBA. Okay. Width and height are given above. The border color is zero, sort of a legacy thing. And then the format that we're going to, sorry. So the first thing is sort of the format that we're storing this thing in. And then the next format is the format that the data is coming in as. And in this case, it's the same. Then we have the data type, which is basically byte objects, so unsigned byte. And then finally, a reference to the data, which in this case can just be that um, byte object above. So I'll just go ahead and get this out of the way. And there we have it. At this point, our texture should be done. So just after we set up OpenGL, we can create the texture. We've defined this function, which will load a texture for us. We've enabled texturing, we've set everything up. There's just maybe one thing we need to do, and that is to define the, um, the set of texture coordinates, which this object will use. So the way texture coordinates go is we have 
u and v they're commonly called, where the u is like our x coordinate within our texture, zero is the left of the texture, leftmost, one is the rightmost. So just sort of put this in. So just looking at the u coordinates, these first two are the rightmost points of the texture. And then these ones are the leftmost, and we can sort of see how that lines up with the positions here. Now, this next part is a little bit funky. So, typically, um, zero will be the bottom of the texture, image-wise, and then one will be the top of the texture. Just like that. But then something really weird happens because when Pygame loads the texture, its coordinate system is reversed. So everything will actually be sort of flipped around. So what I'll be doing is I'll be setting these around the other way, but because the image was loaded upside down, it will correct for it. There are more elegant ways of doing this. So let's go in and actually look at how we would one thing we are going to need texture coordinates. And we can go ahead and give those. So when we come to draw this, we'll have just like that. Okay. And then when I come to draw, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, yeah, go ahead and bind the texture, which, ah, there's a lot of arguments here, isn't there? And I'll pass that in, just the same as everything else. Okay, so I go ahead and draw. Now I'm um, declaring my color for my point. I'm declaring my position for my point. I'm also going to declare the texture coordinate of that point. Just like that. And now fingers crossed, see if it works. There we go. Stella! Anyway, pretty cool. So yeah, there we have it. In this video, we looked at loading images, setting up textures, and now we've got a textured polygon. In the next video, you know, we're almost done with the OpenGL stuff. In the next video, I'm going to have a look at applying some lighting to this. Hope to see you there. Bye.